<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another YouTube Let's Play from us. Kind of funny games. Thank you for coming by. I'm Greg. This is the Prada Long Island Colin Moriarty. And these guys are Drinkbox. Graham. Hey, Graham. Oh, with your sexy more. arms. <laughs> Chris. With your sexy forehead. Uh, you guys are working, working on a little game that. called Severed, and you brought it by to play with us today. Yes, we have. Uh, what are we doing? What are we jumping into? How's it happening? Uh, yeah, so Graham's going to be at the helm. Um, so we're going to be jumping into, I'd say, middle-ish of the game. Okay. This is the entrance to the second dungeon of the game. And so, Chris, explain for some fool out there yes. who doesn't understand that you're here to save the PlayStation Vita, what is Severed? Yeah, I mean, if you haven't been following Severed closely, I couldn't imagine why. Um, so what Severed is, is a first-person dungeon crawler, yeah, um, which has touch-based combat mechanics. And so the game is uses tactile combat, mm -hmm. and it's a mix also with a dash of RPG in it. Uh, and so hopefully we can kind of give you a broad idea of all these different aspects uh, during this Let's Play. Gotcha. So... Yeah, I mean, Graham's jumping right into it. Um, this is the combat. So the game's very heavily focused on combat. And it's really important about uh, pairing your enemies, trying to find the right openings when you can attack, um, and managing different enemies and certain aspects like that. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and it's the direct sequel to Guacamelee. Yeah, so you can <laughs> you can tell the art style's the same. <laughs> Why do you guys like to do so much different stuff? Um, you blobs to guacamole to this. Yeah, for sure. I think it for us it just keeps things fresh. You know, we're a small team and guacamole took a few years and I think just going right into something again that's the same is just tiring. You sort of run out of good ideas. Sure. Um, and it's just interesting, right? The reason we run our own studio is so we can do not a sequel every year. It just gets boring. Mm -hmm. And so now how long have you been working on this game? Uh, too long? Is yeah. that <laughs> I was going to say, has Severed begun to get boring? Uh, yeah, we're happy about finishing it this yeah. week or next. Um, It'll be out soon. Yeah. Vita. I think we've been doing Severed for about two years. Does that sound right, Graham? Yep, about two years. Yeah, about oh, two years. Yeah. Uh, has it broken you, Graham? Uh, no, actually, I'm pretty happy with the game. Okay, good. Uh, but it would be nice to work on something new for, for a change. <laughs> gotcha. Sure. Yeah. Graham's, Graham's a shell of a man right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you raise the volume on the yep, Vita, Graham? Absolutely. Is that better? That better? It's, it's maxed out. Size. There it goes. There now go. it's maxed out. Go. Cool. The Vita decides this is all it needs for volume, you know? It's the perfect amount. So, I, you guys had intended on getting this game out a little earlier, right? Like, yeah. it, you guys kind of brought it back inside and kind of... Did you did you rework things? Did you... What did you, like, kind of find out when you thought you were getting close that you needed to... to fix? Yeah, I mean, I think it's sort of... You hear for a lot of other games too where you have a original idea with a prototype and it's good and it's fun but then you, sometimes it's tough to predict how you're going to make that into a larger game and to give it legs right because I mean our biggest fear is to make a game where it doesn't get interesting the longer it goes into because that's really easy to do right? right you have one single good idea but it's tough to expand it right. and build upon it so I think we just didn't appreciate how long that was going to take um, and again, we want to do that well because we don't want to disappoint people. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm super excited about it. I like that you guys are doing something different. We were kidding around before we started recording that, you know, a lot of us want guacamole too. Yeah. But um, it's important to keep you guys fresh and keep you guys ready to make games. I'm sure you have new ideas and what you want to do next after this. Sure. Um, are you, uh, how do you guys feel about releasing this game on Vita? Um, you know, you guys have been really prominent supporters of the Vita and found great success at the launch of Vita with yep. Mutant Blobs and then Guacamele obviously did very well on Vita. I believe yeah, the media has deemed you saviors of the Vita. Yeah, <laughs> the, the word saviors gets thrown around quite a bit. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. I <laughs> How do you are you guys like kind of bullish about this? Because I, I do feel like, you know, you guys gave a speech at GDC some years ago, actually, about the success you found on Vita and that there is like even though the, the user base is small, that people do buy games on this platform. So are you hoping that those same people that supported Guacamelee and supported Mutant Blobs will come back to the well or whatever, plus some new people? Yeah, well, we hope or we need people to come back to it. Uh, yeah, look, I mean. For sure. The original titles we put out on Vita were awesome uh, reception-wise, and also the numbers we pushed on it were great. Um, again, back then, Vita users tend to be really hardcore and buy games. Right now, they are too. I I'm hoping that's still the case, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you hear the same story. People say, we love our Vita. They're like, oh, but it's on the bookshelf and it has to get charged. It's covered in dust. Yeah. And, this, that, and the other, and the firmware. Yeah, I know. Oh, you've talked, talked to the same people. people. <laughs> 
So if people are just willing to put up with one update on their iOS, on their OS, probably, and then it gets severed, that'll help a I lot. I think the joke always is is that they they're collecting dust because there's nothing there's nothing they want to sure. play, right? All the JRPGs or whatever, or the little games that are just you know part of PS Plus or Taco Master aren't what they're looking for. Well, and I don't but think you and your credibility, wrong. yeah. Uh, yeah, they're not wrong, and I think we're hoping to bring that right. Uh, and it's it's a fun plat it's a fun uh, piece of hardware to work on, and it looks so good severed on the device. Um, yeah, I just hope uh, people come back or people remember that they own a Vita, and uh, and the community's strong out there. We just hope. They're not too busy doing other stuff. Yeah, the PSI Love You audience are, you know, for our podcast, uh, you know, that you guys probably listen to if you're watching this video, uh, I think are certainly excited about this game. We'll certainly be talking about it on the show and playing it well, yeah. as soon as we can. Well, um, that's what's weird about it is I think it's another, it's similar to what I, I was talking about with The Division this week, right? That on paper, I don't think I should be interested in this game. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's a touch game and it's this first person RPG and I'm crawling around. Like, eh. yeah, yeah. And then when I sat down and played it that first time at PAX, seemingly five years ago. I was like, wow, like this is fun. I want to play this. You know what I mean? And every time I've played it since then, it's a little bit deeper because originally it was just these kind of slashes, but then yep. it was introducing not the puzzle so much, but you know, how do I get to the weak spot on this character? Well, I have to do this, that, and the other. Yeah, I, I think like, for us, at least with Severed, we, we like to believe we're bringing something really fresh and new, something that hasn't particularly been seen before. Yeah. Um, for us, that was part of the challenge. And I think with Severed, uh, the combat itself, you sort of raise the point. It's really interesting. It's about managing multiple enemies, trying to find the right weak points, but also there's puzzles in the game. The exploration is pretty great. Um, the There's definitely RPG tech tree mechanic, right? So there's a tech tree that you'll get as the game progresses, and you'll be able to put in various... Uh, so basically, okay, when you kill monsters, they drop body parts, and you can sever them up, and you can use these various parts as a currency to upgrade various abilities. Um, we had bad timing here because I was hoping Graham would be able to open the tech tree, but oh, way to go, can, Graham! Tree, God damn it! He's now fighting a million enemies. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, so here's the tech tree. Um, so as the game progresses, every time you kill a boss, you cut off a part of their body. Right. And what you can then do is wear that uh, that part of their body that you just cut up, and that unlocks a new tech tree. Um, it'll also give you a new ability. So here you can see on the left side, um, that's the various monster parts that get dropped that you can use as currency, and various upgrades will cost various monster pieces. And you can see the descriptions will be there if Graham clicks around. I don't know if you can get it. Can you get an upgrade out of anywhere? Yeah. yeah, so this one will upgrade my damage. Uh... Oh, and that's your character on the right, by the way. That's Sasha. I should have mentioned her. Uh, you probably should have. She's pretty awesome. Sexist. Yeah, I, I, I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we can cut that out, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you'll notice that also Sasha's is missing an arm, which is pretty a pretty big deal. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you're introduced to your family. To something has happened to your family, and you're not exactly sure what. And there's obviously some major event has happened, and so you're actually trying to figure out where your family is in this weird world. Um, you don't know if the world's in your head, or if it's a fictional, you know, sure, sure. A fantasy world. Well, it's obviously a fantasy world, but... Uh, Looks pretty real to me. Yes! <laughs> Realistic art. Uh, the Mouse Co. in the chat says, will it have a platinum? And you know, that's the question I'm thinking too. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a platinum. In your face, Steve Gaynor. Uh... <laughs> burn. <laughs> Platinum burn. I actually called... Uh, anyways, I was doing a podcast yesterday on Sony, and I called uh, Trophies Achievements on the stage. Oh, you son of a bitch. I know. Was, I can't believe they call you the savior of the Vita. <laughs> so embarrassing. I started saying I panicked. Um, so what Graham's doing here is just kind of neat. He's fighting multiple enemies, and you'll notice at the bottom there's a timer mm. that will show you when the enemy beside you is attacking. So sometimes this game's a lot about managing the enemies to the left and right of you. So you can imagine you move to the left, you block one, then move back to the enemy that sure. you're focusing on. Um, and you'll also see, so, so besides health and magic that Sasha will have, there's this, well, the fight ended. That was a terrible <laughs> segue. Back. Hey man, live demos, what could go wrong? <laughs> uh, but she has a, a bar that's called her focus meter. And so the longer you will fight a single enemy, you gain focus. 
Uh, and so once your focus meter is maxed out, you start doing uber damage. Um, but your focus meter is sort of performance dependent. So if you get hit, uh, you won't fill it up as fast. So ideally, the more efficient and the stronger you play, or the more efficient you play in combat, the quicker your focus meter will fill up and the closer you'll get to doing uber damage. The Rams is showing off here. So how meaty is the is the campaign? Because I, I've I liked I, I always wanted Guacamelee, for instance, to be longer because it was so good. Right. But it was still a tight experience, and it was still a game that you know, I platinumed it twice. I platinumed it on Vita, and I platinumed it on PS4. Right, nice. Um, so I obviously enjoyed the game quite a bit. I enjoyed it. Uh, so are we looking at like a similar eight hour kind of thing here with Severed? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that's pretty much on the mark. We've been bringing playtesters in for about a month, and it seems to be the range of six to ten hours. There's additional side content that's harder content, so if people want to put more time into it, there's definitely that that content, but I would say a playthrough of six to ten is a pretty safe bet. Um, and for us, that seems to be the sweet spot. Sure. For, I mean, for us, that's sort of the games we like to play too, right? Right. I mean, we just don't have time to put in necessarily 40 hours in a game. No, absolutely. And plus, making a forty-hour game sounds really hard. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Is there, is there, other than the side content or the kind of the option content, is there a replay value? Is there, is there a d difficulty uh, sliders or anything like that that you can mess around with? Um, so we have uh, sort, sort of challenge dungeons that you can go back through, um, and also the there's tons of secrets in the game, so you can play through. I would say. But then there's lots of random secrets that I think would encourage you to have another go through. Um, and also, it's it's a connected open world, so I suspect there's going to be some interesting ways to try to run through the game efficiently or sort of speed run ways. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what people discover, like the audience discover, and right. do things that we haven't thought of. Because the game is, it's kind of Metrovania in a regards where it's gated at certain parts. So I'm personally curious to see how people break it and sort of as they replay it shortcuts that we right. hadn't thought of. Yeah, because people broke the uh Oh they broke, broke the, the shit out of it. Yeah, they broke the shit out of it. Um we were at we did the speed run during the uh the Ega stream at Twitch last year and people came on and sh and broke the game right in front of us. I was like, so <laughs> I, I play I, I thought I knew this game, but apparently I don't know it very well. <laughs> it it's wicked. It's it's wicked seeing what people do and what they people are so smart. Gamers are really smart. Gamers are smart. Gamers, especially Vita gamers. Especially Vita gamers. gamers. Especially yes. Vita gamers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another question from the chat is yeah. being repeated over. Do you have you thought about price on this guy? What are you thinking for pricing? Uh, great question. I think we're probably we don't know. I yeah. think it's going to be standard, small indie game price. Okay. You know, I'm guessing it'll probably so free. It'll be free. Yeah. Micro payments. <laughs> Micro. Yeah, the advance and get your arm back, you have to pay. Yeah, I mean, we haven't decided. It's probably going to be around 50 maybe above, maybe sure. below. Uh, but yeah, it's not going to be a $40, or $60 title unless people want to pay that. Buy it four times. Buy it four exactly. times. Yeah, buy it for your friends. Send yeah. off that one. Uh, Buff Arms asks, or says, actually, this is just a statement. This looks like a PSV already title IMO. I agree. <laughs> Imagine my move while I'm doing it. Yeah, so we talked about it. Yeah? Um, the one challenge I would say is in the game at the moment, you can't look up or down. Mm. So we would have to solve that by yeah. by making by making art for up and down or just blocking it off. I was going to say, yeah, the assets probably don't even exist for, for you guys to look, necessarily look up and down anyway. So yeah, that would be a, a bigger challenge than just porting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean... One thing of note, which I think is kind of neat, is that, so the game you're going between nodes, and every node itself is actually a giant cylinder that you're standing in the center of, and our artists are really, really strong 2D artists, so what we do is we take their art and we wrap it around the cylinder, and sort of pinch the edges to give it depth. Interesting. So, yeah, so we definitely don't have the art for the top and the bottom, but it's kind of an interesting factoid to how we, how we make the we game. We love factoids here and kind of funny. Yeah. It's a, it's I love this upgrade tree. How so? How many? So you have the how many different trees are there? Uh, there's three trees. Three total. trees. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So <clears throat> one of the abilities I got at the end of the first dungeon was uh, by gaining this helmet, you get the the power that the boss had, and it was like a, it's like a flash attack that stuns enemies. Uh, 
So the this, the flash deck basically gets its whole whole own tree for upgrading different aspects of that. Yeah. Uh, Graham's also right now in some worm tunnels. Yeah. Oh, he was. I Nothing like a good Damn worm it. tunnel. <laughs> How was it? I mean, you do you making a role playing game specifically? There's a lot of balancing issues and stuff. I mean, was it a challenge from a design perspective to make this game compared to the others in terms of like how much, how many hit points should an enemy have? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, definitely. How That's often should it attack and how hard should the game be? I mean, I know you guys have to deal with these kind of questions with Guacamelee too, but not not to this extent. Yeah, uh, the c currency. I mean, currency especially. So it, it's tough, right? I mean, again, we're always doing new things, so we're not necessarily new. We're not used to some experiences, and in this case, it's. How many items will people have at X stage of the game, or B stage of the game, or sure. C stage of the game? And we kind of have to cover the difficulty depending on how many upgrades people might get, which depends how many monster parts they'll get. And so you have these Excel sheets coming out your butt, and you're trying to like change this and that, and balance, balance, balance. And uh, it's a fun challenge, but it's yeah. Yeah, Excel sheets out the butt sounds real fun. Yeah, I mean that's not. <laughs> first off, don't put them there. Like, <laughs> There's got to be a better place to store these. Jeez. Yeah, like after a while, like on the computer. Oh. <laughs> Keep printing them out every time you edit them. Yeah. yeah. Put them right <laughs> in your butt. <laughs> so in this group edit, and that gets even worse. I know. That's, then that's just weird. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, so here's a, here's an example of a, a way that we gate the player. Uh, you've seen these things in the world a bunch of times at this point, and I've just now uh, found something in this house that uh, it's a spine that I've attached to the back of my sword, uh. Uh, which lets you do a charge attack by holding your finger on the screen. And charge attacks will break through any of these orange crusty things that you see in the world. So so now the player can go back and re-explore sections of the uh, the world that they've seen those orange charge blockers on. Cool. Yeah, can you pop up the map? Oh, never mind. This is, this is a good right example place. of you using the charge attack to actually fight an enemy. So essentially, you had seen this enemy earlier. So this is sort of a stronger version where parts of them are guarded by that um, the armor material that Graham has to use his charge attack to break through. And now that he's done it, he's made uh, the enemy vulnerable for normal attacks. Uh, Here's the map. That's a good looking map now. It, it looked way worse a month ago. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's also different levels in the game, so there's multiple floors above and below. I was hoping to show that in the yeah. map. Yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. Just going back to another part of the Oh map. yeah, that's way better. Yeah. Um, so you kind of start to get the idea of how the game's made up of nodes and how they're connected. Uh, you'll have stairs going up, going down, portals going between. Um, I'm just going to turn on the, to show where I'm touching, so it'll make more sense what's going on here, but... You now that menu, of course, will be oh, in the cool. final version of the yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all spoilers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, again, a lot of the game is about exploration, too, which is neat. I mean, I don't trust this woman already. <laughs> She's creepy. Sonic the Hedgehog's grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be trusted. Wait, how do you guys know it's a woman? <laughs> uh, look at her Sexist. outfit. Sexist. No. <laughs> Stop trying to turn around on us. <laughs> Listen, you're the one. This is my show. <laughs> Cut the cameras. I can't wait to play this. Yeah. I had no idea you guys were this close to to, to submitting um, for cert. So, yeah. yeah, it's exciting. Do you believe in it? I believe in it. Every time I talk to you, you're always like, ah, I don't know. Yeah, you know. Are you a, have you come around the bend yet? I have. Because I think it looks awesome. I think when you're making games, it's really easy to get s stuck in the forest. Sure, the that happens to everybody, is. I think, yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh, my game's shit, I hate it. And then finally, near the end, you say, oh, it's, it's actually pretty Perfect good. Perfect 10, Saviors of the Vita, yeah. checkbox. <laughs> Embrace it, start signing your PlayStation blog post that way. You're right, okay, <laughs> done. From this point forward, we're Saviors. There's the Holy Trinity, there's you guys, there's Geo Corsi, and there's us. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're doing what we can. Um, so this is a character you'll see throughout the game. They will help you most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. Who are you fighting now, Graham? So, let's see. What else can I mention about this? So again, I mean, this bubble guy, if you maybe had noticed, you have to sort of swing at certain areas. And the, well, can you cut off the arm? Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, I can do that, yeah. Yeah. So some enemies, for example, that strong arm, the one that Graham was just facing. And you can imagine do this and cut off the arm so you can deal with deal with that enemy later and then focus on this enemy. Gotcha. 
So we provide players options to sort of disable an enemy temporarily and then switch back to deal with other enemies. And, so, and different players have different preferences to which enemies they like to kill first. Uh, so we give that option to the player. That's to awesome. Manage. Make your own strategy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Take on the enemies you want first. Yeah, so you can kind of see this metagame evolve. Yeah, this looks this looks so awesome, right? I'm really excited about this game, and yeah, it was kind of kind of disappeared for a while, so you kind of almost like you know forgot it was coming soon. You know, like uh, it was always on the back of my mind, one of my anticipated Vita games, yeah. but you just didn't know. It was well, we kept getting sucker to putting it into our anticipated Vita list. Yeah, 2015. We tricked you real good on 2014, that. 2014. <laughs> yeah. 2009. Before, before it was even being made. Yeah. <laughs> Vita as soon as they title. announced Vita, I was like, I can't wait for Severed. All right, so wrapping up. Yeah. You're the saviors of the Vita. Yep. You're submitting soon, so Severed will be on Vita soon. Yes. Anything else? Where should people be following you? Where should they be paying attention to Drinkbox? Uh, they can follow us on Twitter at Drinkbox Studios, um, Facebook Drinkbox Studios, and we post in our blog all the time. And yeah, check the PlayStation blog too, because we'll be working with them okay. when we get close. Well, great. Yeah. Can't wait to play. Get, it out, get home and get it out. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, we are YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Subscribe, like, share, and know. It's been our pleasure to serve you.